Okay, hi, it's, it's Adam Franklin here, and I'm very lucky to be here with Barry Feldman. He is a content marketer who I have admired for a long time. He is the um, strategist, copywriter, and creative director at Feldman Creative, coming to us from California and wearing a, wearing a very trendy Feldman Creative hat. Thanks for joining us, Barry. All right, thanks for having me, Adam. That was quite an introduction. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to raise my price. <laughs> you are absolutely well. You're a bit, <laughs> bit, a very um, established copywriter and, and a person whose work I've seen popping up on all the major blogs for, for, um, for many months now since I've been following you. One of the ones that really caught my attention was your guest blogging on Copyblogger. And I'd really like to know, what was the process that you followed to become a guest blogger for Copyblogger? Um, yeah, I wish I could tell you that it it happened according to plan. Uh, as you know, a lot of guest blog or a lot of opportunities that that our guest blogs have a thing like you know write for us or some sort of application process that's more or less uh, formalized because we live in a you know a content world and people want content. But a copy blogger doesn't do that. You know they're sort of on this upper echelon where the, they decide who writes for them. So uh, I was a fan for way before you know for uh, much longer than I was. A writer, uh, and so I follow Copy Blogger. I love Copy Blogger. I learned a lot from them. And the one time that I sort of uh, campaigned to write for them, I simply tried to figure out what uh, people's emails address were. Sonia and Brian Clark, and um, it didn't work. You know, I, I, I got I think I got some sort of polite rejection letter saying that you know we um, ask writers that we admire to write for us. So I gave that up for quite some time and just sort of played the game. I think that, that um, guest bloggers often do, just try to look for um, unique and, and promising opportunities to get uh, bigger audiences, new audiences. And uh, along the way came Convince and Convert, Jay, Bay's, Jay Bear's Convince and Convert, which is a great, great blog. And uh, one day I got a tweet from Brian, Brian Clark saying, uh, I'd love to see something like that on Copy Blogger. And uh, that's how it started. Now the conversation continued on Twitter for a while um, when he followed me, and then it turned into email, and then I was invited to write for Copy Blogger. That's fantastic. Now, it's it's a huge audience, obviously, when you're writing for a, a blogger of the caliber of Copy Blogger. What what type of um, call to action do you use to, I guess, make the most of that audience? Well, that's definitely a tightrope act. If you um, make your article, you know, super transparently self-serving with click here for my stuff, click here for my stuff, you know, it's one big, you know, piece of link bait such that you're really uh, thinking about your website first and their audience second, uh, you're not going to last long. So I, I didn't do that and in fact uh, there's an editing process such that most of their links are internal. Now they and a lot of places that I for they don't object for you uh, using relevant material. Um, and then, they, you know, they generally have different rules about the author box or biography that follows the piece and um, companies handle that differently with the amount of uh, promotion and links they'll allow and, you know, some have uh, photographs and some don't. In the case of Copy Blogger, I played it conservative and I allowed the links to be mostly theirs and I think my favorite or latest or hottest ebook is mentioned in the um, author box. You know, Barry is the author of the plan to grow your business with effective online marketing. So that uh, was very nice of them to publish that, and you know, that's sort of the the payment they make, I suppose, in exchange for having a guest blogger. And I uh, created, you know, a massive, massive spike. You getting some feedback now? A little bit. Not so good. Um, it created you know, a great massive spike at the time uh, those things ran, and it still creates traffic daily, really. So um, in the future, if I write for them, I might change the ebook um, or the link that is more important to me. But uh, that's what they allowed, and that's what I did. That's the call to action. If you want to know more about me or read more of my writing that's relevant to the story you just read, uh, here's an ebook for you. Yeah, that's... that's, that's um... That's nice to know because I think, you know, obviously you don't want to be spamming there. <laughs> obviously there, there, the guest blog post with links to your site, but I think, you know, having, I was really keen to find out, ha having that, um, having that call to action back to your, 
a premium piece of your content seems like a tactic that a lot of um, good content marketers like yourself are following. Yeah, and it's gated, so if they do do that, they're not landing on the page that has the PDF, they're landing on the page that has the form, so I'll learn who they are. And of course, in my analytics, I'll learn that they came from Copyblogger. And then um, Copyblogger, like most, you know, wants you to enjoy the SEO benefits that you'll get from writing for them, and so uh, and the social benefits. And so they, they typically allow you to um, make your Twitter address or LinkedIn address available. And then sometimes invisibly, you make your name a link with that um, tricky uh, rel author thing and I'm talking about rel equals author and you know, basically that's uh, some code that uh, allows uh, you know, you're basically making a link to your Google Plus page and uh, if, you know if you're looking for a reason to have a Google Plus page that's it right there and then you know plus all the other things that make Google Plus great but um, that allows your image to appear alongside the uh, the URL, the name, you know, the title tag, and the and the meta description that um, explains that story. So all that together, picture, uh, headline, description, you know, is a very compelling thing to see when you're doing a search. And what sort of what, what sort of um, conversion rate or, or number of people might you attract from a, a guest blog post on a, on a on a blog like that, in terms of conversions through that landing page? Uh, very very high. You know, the person that made it to the author box of a guest blog, uh, first of all, read the story. Secondly, um, they said, you know, this guy can write or this guy uh, is, or gal, is helpful. And so they're at the bottom now. And uh, they simply wouldn't click there if they didn't want it. That's not to say there's no leakage. You know, they get to the landing page and they got distracted or they, you know, didn't want to fill it out for one reason or another. But I would say the conversion rate from a, a high authority website like Copyblog or Convince and Convert is 50% or higher and in terms of numbers um, you know that would be relative to the amount of traffic you get and you know how, how you know really where you stand in the website world and what kind of company you have. My company is more or less a virtual agency and uh, it's largely me so like a you know bad day I suppose with traffic might be uh, 50 or 60 visits these numbers go up over time of course uh, based on the amount of things I'm doing, but like now, a, a typical day is in the in the 200 to 300 range, and so the day uh, yesterday I made a debut on HubSpot. I got uh, three to 400 uh, hits on my site, and about a quarter to half of them were thanks to HubSpot. And the conversion rate was pretty good. I don't think that I had anything to say about an ebook or something else you should read there, you know. But on Copyblogger, I did. So the conversion rate rate's really high, and the numbers are, you know, the actual headcount is probably not as important as the conversion rate. And it, so, with the people that convert on your website, they then opt in. They give you their name and they give you their email address. They then you then go on to nurture those people through email marketing, don't you? Yeah. In you know, in, in a very modern soft sell way, they do not get an email from me that says anything other than thank you, and uh, you know, glad to have you. And then in the future, they get my newsletter, and I do two of those. I, I guess that might even be one of the first interactions you and I have had because you mentioned that you like it. Mm -hmm. I do two. Uh, I have one called Get Magnetic, which is about all things online marketing, and uh, it's really. I guess I have to admit this, without an editorial calendar. It's the whim of the week when I decide to do it. And I do it about once a week. Um, maybe a little less often than that, twice a month. And that's because I have a curated email that I call AEIOU, and that features, generally speaking, there's five vowels, right? Five links <laughs> to five stories that uh, I often didn't write, I just discovered, and A means article, E means um, ebook. I, I is flexible. I is often infographics and sometimes interviews. O is an online tip or O is an online tool and U is a, a useful tip. And so those links are sort of like thematically based. Like it might be about Google Plus this week or it might be about guest blogging this week or some aspect of online marketing. So I do those both and that's my lead nurturing campaign. Um, because I have a reasonably steady flow of new content that's created, uh, my email list grows pretty fast, especially with the guest blogging I've done. So I'll capture uh, several hundred new emails every week, and uh, it's understood that they're opting in to uh, get 
email from me. Initially, what they were really asking for was an ebook, but they're going to get email from me. Of course, uh, they can opt out uh, when they want to. They generally don't, and that list has really exploded in the last uh, year. So I've gotten very serious about email marketing for about a year, and about a year ago, I probably had a thousand email lists, and today I have over three thousand. And that's a snowball. You know, if we do this next year, I'll probably have over. 30,000, I mean, I, I don't know, but um, it, it grows uh, in a very snowball effect sort of way. Wait, well, you don't know about snowballs. You live in Australia. What am I talking about? <laughs> oh, we get a few <laughs> snowballs down south. Not too many. More fires at the moment. <laughs> and Barry, with your email marketing out of the AEIOU content, have you noticed that there's been a particular type of content that gets the highest click-through rate? No, I, you know, I, I, I um, remember you were going to ask me that, and that's my, my disappointing answer in a way. I think I have a two-part answer I, um, I want to tell you about the second part that occurred to me uh, since you asked me that. I think, you know, if we were really, you know, getting nitpicky and we could say, you know, these subject lines work better, these topics work better, but I'd have to be smarter and more analytical than I am to figure that out because my open rates are awesome. You know, my open rates are... 20 to 35 percent so they're usually like in between like 27 28 so how that compares to um, general emailers i would say it compares very favorably it's like three four or five times as high and then uh, my click-through rates are about the same numbers um, sometimes i'm shocked i did one about uh, my whole collection of ebooks and it had like a 40 percent click-through rate you know so it sort of depends on the uh, the, f the freebies i suppose but I generally do them at the same time and I generally do subject line test them. And I learn a little and, and you know, I, I have lessons. Uh, if we were talking specifically about email today that I could give and apply uh, to email newsletters and how to handle them. But I haven't, you know, I haven't figured out like this subject's uh, weak and this subject's strong because my focus, while it's, it's not, um, you know, laser focused, it's online marketing. You opted in because you're interested in online marketing. And that covers uh, four or five, six subjects, you know, uh, writing, blogging, web page uh, design and creation and writing, uh, landing pages, email, social media, and, and not much more. And so it, that, there hasn't been any duds at all, really, in terms of uh, letting me down and going, ooh, that was a mistake. Every once in a while, I, like with AAU, it's sort of AEIOU, it's sort of thematic. You know, so I go, this issue's about Twitter or this issue's about Google+. And I think those are the riskiest ones of all because you might read it and go, I don't really care about Twitter or Google+. But um, I haven't really suffered that consequence. I think I have a very good read on what my readers want to learn about. And then secondly, I'm thinking about writing a piece about this. I think most people attribute uh, the, the metrics that uh, would be considered important for email, like open rate and click-through rates, they trace that to the subject line, the timing, um, various things. But what I think is more important than all that stuff is it traces to the authority or trust you have with the person it's coming from. So before the subject line, it says it's from Adam Franklin. It's from Barry Feldman. It's from Company X. Well, that is, um, you know, a, a not an easy thing to put your finger on, but that's something you have to earn. And so there are emails that I automatically open, you know, like copy blogger, because I'm not going to be disappointed with what I find, you know. And so that's what I think uh, takes, you know, sort of um, sweat equity you know you have to be useful helpful uh, creative re you know, consistent and, and then your email is going to get open you know it's not to say that subject lines don't matter timing doesn't matter maybe your email provider the, so the topic matter but more importantly i think is you know is this person a friend of mine you know can i count on, on seeing something that's going to help me yeah I, I totally agree with you there barry i mean um certainly subject lines are important but i think it's it's mostly to do with the trust of who's actually sending it and, and that them knowing that they're actually going to get something decent and, and interesting. And that's been one of the, the major reasons why I've been opening yours since I've, I've been receiving them this year. I love them. There's always something, I know when I open it's going to be something there that I find valuable. And um, I trust you. Yeah, good to hear. I mean, like, if I, that's, that's what it is, it's trust. If I say, all right, this next one's about Snapchat, you know, kind of topical and timely, and you go, I don't care about Snapchat. 
Oh, I never heard of Snapchat. You go, well, Barry says I should read about it. You know, maybe that's meaningful. And, uh, and I guess in, in the case of uh, an open rate that's in the 25 to 35% range, uh, you know, that is in fact what's happening. Barry, thank you so much for your insights today. Where can our Down Under viewers go to find out more about you and your organization? Well, I have not set up a website specifically for Australians, but uh, Down Underers and everybody can go to feldmancreative.com and uh, my blog is simply, you know, followed by slash blog. And um, boy, if you read about online marketing, your, your, your space is going to be invaded by me. Starting tomorrow, I'm a columnist on Social Media Today. Uh, I just recently started writing for HubSpot. I write monthly for Marketing Props and Convincing Convert, and I've um, collected all that uh, goo into a page on my website that says this is where Barry Guest blogs. And so that's for the convenience of the readers that might want to uh, subscribe or you know, do the RSS thing. Thank you so much. I've been seeing your name all over the web. I love all the articles and thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. All right. Awesome, Adam. Thanks for inviting me here and I hope your audience got something from it. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye.